What's up YouTube? Today we're going to take a look at a real SQL interview question asked by Facebook during data scientists and data analyst interviews. Let's get into it. So this one's called highest energy consumption company tag for Facebook and Marcus Medium on startatscratch.com which is a data science focused platform that allows you to practice these interview questions, have example data and test your solution against test cases to see if it's correct. The task says find the date with the highest total energy consumption from the Facebook data centers. Output the date along with the total energy consumption across all data centers. And we have three tables, FB EU energy, FB Asia energy and FB NA energy. These are the separate data centers of Facebook split by continent and we have a date and consumption field in these tables. We can take a look at the example input by hitting the preview button here. So we just have date values and one consumption value per day. Same thing goes for the other tables. We have data in here for Asia and North America. It seems like they contain a different amount of dates or days. We have one, two, three, four, five days in here, six in here, and then five in here again. And the days, the dates are not really aligning necessarily. So we have fifth and sixth missing here, but we have them in here. And we have sixth in here, but not fifth. So first thing we need to do is combine the data to get the total energy consumption per day and then find the day with the highest energy consumption from this intermediate table that contains the total energy consumption per date. Now we just found out that we have missing dates in some of these tables. So I first thought about joining these, but since we have different dates in each table, that won't necessarily work. If we try to have this FBEU energy table as base for the join, we would say we're joining on this date and that means only fields and other tables with that date are gonna be matched. And yeah, we, we won't have 5th and 6th of January in there, for example. So that's why we can't use a join here. If we could, we would just sum up these columns of A dot consumption, B dot consumption, C dot consumption, ABC being the different data center tables. But because that's not possible, it's important to always check the data, of course. And because we can't join, we're gonna do a union here. So we have an example in code section here, which is previewing EU energy. And we can actually use that to get the data from the entire table and then also use this building block for our union. So if we union that same line of code and change it to say FB Asia energy and FB NA energy, we should get all rows just appended to each other and we just get a really long table of all these values. What we need to look out for here is the difference between union and union all. So if you use union here, we're gonna combine rows but omit duplicates. But if two tables have the same energy consumption on a given day, we're gonna omit that entry because SQL is gonna think it's a duplicate since we only have date and consumption here. Let's take a look at an example. I think, let's see. Yeah, it happens for 1st of January already. We have an energy consumption of 400 in FBEU energy. That's what I just hit preview on. And for FB Asia energy, we also have a consumption of 400 for 1st of January. So if we run our usual union code, we only have gonna have one entry for 1st of January with 400. Let's look for it. It's here. We don't have a second entry. We have another entry for 250 energy consumption from the FBNA energy table, but that's not a duplicate because it says 250 instead of 400. Now, what we need to change this for is union all, and that's gonna include duplicates. So we have that 400 showing up twice in there now. 
I actually ran that query on that site without union all and it still works because apparently 1st of January isn't the date with the highest energy consumption. It's 6th and 7th. But that is something to note and somewhere we, you could trip up. Um, let's just change that select to uppercase just for formatting and move on from here. So we have the total energy consumption per day now. Um, so we could just pack that into a subquery and call that FB energy without the continent in there to denote that this is the total energy consumption per given day. Okay, so how do we move on from here? We have the entire energy consumption dates in one big table now. We don't have the total energy consumption yet because we didn't sum it up per date yet. So that's what we're going to do right now by selecting a date and the sum of consumption from this large table and call it total energy as specified in the example output. We need to group by date to sum it up per date value and some consumption is just going to add up the consumption values that we have on these dates. Let's just run that to see if it works. We have forgotten to specify from here, but that should give us values. And we do see 1250 in here for 6th and 7th of January. So what we could do to solve this question quickly is use limit. At least it seems like that. So if we order that by total energy in descending order, we will get the highest energy, total energy on top. And if we hit limit one, we will get the date with the highest total energy consumption. Now, the problem is we're actually supposed to output all dates that have the highest total energy consumption value. So if there, is, if there are several dates with the same energy value, which is the highest total energy value, 1250 in this case, then we should output them both or all of them. It could be more than two. It's not really specified here, but apparently that is what's required for that question. So limit one doesn't work. You could hack it to say limit two, but you, you don't know before how many dates are gonna be sharing the highest value, right? So we could, yeah, limit one, take that value and then join it again on that table. We could use max here maybe, but what I like to do is use rank window functions because they allow you to be flexible with your solution afterwards and actually not just limit it to get the dates with the highest total energy consumption but also change it up to the top three or top five by using the rank window function and that's what we're going to do right now. Okay so we're going to try to come up with another column that's going to be rank and that's going to be ranking that table based on the total energy in descending order. So I'll order that by total energy in descending order again to show you what I mean. We would have a rank value of one for the highest total energy. In this case, we have two with the highest total energy, so they would both have rank one. Then I want rank two, three, four, five, and six for the other ones. You can use different rank functions to treat ties differently, but we really only care about rank one in this case. So. I'll try to come up with that window function right now. We're gonna need another field. Using the rank window function, we're gonna apply this window function syntax of the over keyword and then in parentheses, partition by, order by. We can specify what to partition that window by and what to order it by. Partitioning can be thought of something like group by for window functions. By the way, if you haven't heard about window functions at all, this is not the video to start with, even though rank is a very common case to use these. Anyways, we can, we basically want to specify what we want to, what we want to use to build that rank and we want to use total energy and assign that rank based on total energy in descending order. So we're gonna specify order by total energy in descending order. Since total energy hasn't been evaluated yet, 
we would either have to make this entire thing a subquery and then have the rank applied to that temporary table, or we could just use some consumption in that window function already and skip that step of doing another subquery. So just, yeah, this is basically total energy since we just, yeah, use that alias for that sum. And if we specify that we want to order by descending order, then this will apply a rank based on total energy ordered descendingly. So we can remove partition by since we are not interested in partitioning on any dates. We want to uh, look at the entire table. If we had something like in another question, a user, it might make sense to have it in the partition by clause. But that's not the case here. Let's just call that R and that gives us a rank. So we have rank one for the first two rows and then rank three, four, five, six. If we use another rank function, dance rank, then it should carry on with two instead of three. So that's just yeah, another way of doing it. Let's just keep regular rank here um, and move on from here. So if we put that into another subquery, we're pretty much almost done. As I said, we created that rank, which is the hardest part. And now we just need to filter on that rank being one to get the dates or the rows with the highest energy consumption. So we just want to select date and total energy for the output as specified here from this, I always forget from, from this table, let's call it FB energy ranked because it contains that rank column. And let's just say the rank should be one. And make it pretty. <laughs> and that should give us the expected output. If we check that solution, it's correct as well. And why I like this solution is because it's so flexible. So you can change r to being less than or equal to five and that gives you the top five dates with the highest energy consumption so it's going to show five rows since we use regular rank and it's going to skip um it's going to skip rows after the tie so it's going to go one one three instead of one one two so it works well here and uh, yeah mm, you could also use limit maybe, but yeah, it's just reverted to the regular solution. So overall, I like this question because it has some edge cases of using union all, not regular union, not being able to join the tables because of missing dates, then having several steps and subqueries of getting towards combining the tables, getting the total energy, getting the ranks in there, and then filtering your output. So you can kind of make it part way through the problem and kind of show how advanced your SQL is without solving the entire problem if you are somehow stuck on it and are not an expert in window functions or something. You can solve it using max, but I prefer this solution because it's more flexible. Anyways, that's been it for me. If you want to check out this question and others, check out stratastretch.com. It's a data science focused platform that allows you to practice SQL interview questions for data scientists, data analysts in all similar positions. You have over 500 technical questions on there like this one, over 400 non-technical questions. You can run your code. There are video solutions on it, just like this one. You can currently get the lifetime membership for the same price as a yearly lead code membership, which is insane value in my opinion. And you just, realize it's a very data science focused platform. I'm going to solve some more of these. So make sure to stick around to the channel if you're interested. And apart from that, I'll see you in another video. Bye.